needed to become strong enough to win at the line of scrimmage. You need to become strong enough to stalemate that scrum. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything more than that is wasted baggage that you're going to carry onto the field with you. Mm. So how strong do I need to be to be there? And I found if my guys were benching my big guys anywhere between 400 and 450 pounds, then we were okay. We didn't have to go. It takes so much time to bench press 500 pounds. It takes so much time to squat 600 pounds. You touched on, you've touched on chaos a few times and how effective it is to embrace chaos in training. What does that look like with your agility drills and your field-based speed work? Right. You continue to move them at speeds of game speeds and you, you replicate what they're going to do on the field. Mm. And so when you do it at game speed and then their mind gets to work at that speed, what happens too much is we get into this whole protect the athlete thing. Okay. And, and so, and I use our, our NBA, so the athletes today are, are, you know, they're taking their rest days and they're not playing and, and stuff like that. Uh, Wilt Chamberlain, in the year that he averaged 50 points a game, missed eight minutes of the whole season that he didn't play. He averaged 50 points. In one game, he scored 100 points, and that was Wilt Chamberlain. All right? And today's athletes, which are better conditioned, better taken care of, Better, better nutrition. They travel in jet planes, not on buses like they did with Wilt Chamberlain in the 60s. All right. These guys have to have days off. All right. What happens is we start treating these guys like prima donnas and we stop callousing them. And callousing comes from a, a term that John Harbaugh, the head football coach for the, the uh, Baltimore, uh, the, uh, uh, I think Baltimore Ravens, said, he said, athletes need to be calloused which means they need to learn how to work and their bodies need to learn how to change direction. They need to work under hard conditions. They need to work in the chaos. That, how, how my chances to win improved? Mm. Well, quite a Absolutely. bit. You know, yeah. if you look at the NFL combine, which is our, when we take the college players and test them, just all those are movement skills. We're not seeing if they can play football at all. We're judging on how well they move. So if you go ahead and break down your sport, I don't care if it's rugby, I don't care if it's Australian rules football, I don't care if it's soccer, I don't care what sport you're talking about, basketball, baseball, those who move better will have a chance to be more successful. We call those people athletes. So Jack, if I had, if I had 11 people on my team, you had 11, but I had 11 better athletes who had an upper hand. Well, I did because I had better athletes. Why were they better athletes? Because they moved more efficiently than your athletes. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can't recruit athletes, how are you going to develop your athletes? Well, you're going to teach them how to move. And so you're going to look at the game, you're going to dissemble the game, and, and then you're going to look at it and say, how do I teach my guys to move better? And so you're going to take down the sport and you're going to do all your movement drills that you're going to ask them to do on the field. And so when they do that over and over and over and over and over again, all of a sudden, they do without having to think. When not ha they're not having to think, they live in what's called uh, in a loop, okay? Uh, observe, decide, act, all right? And so what happens is their loop is a lot tighter than those people who haven't trained at that. People, and this is the Tom Coughlin uh, uh, quote, I, I, can, uh, I can motivate people to do what they don't want to do so they can become what they want to become, all right? And so, you know, it was one of those things I was able to help them get on that path and help them understand. Now, and this is, this is a coaching idea right here. You know, and mm -hmm. your, your, your question is, well, how do you do that? How do you get people to do that? It, it, the simple word, trust. They have to trust you. All right. How do you get trust? Your consistency. I was, I was the same person all the time when I was working with my athletes. Jack, I was so much the same. I dressed the same <laughs> every day, all right? I had a blue pullover. I had a gray shirt under it. I had blue shorts, and I had blue shoes. If I got new shoes, the players would see it because they could tell that I was wearing and that. But, but what I wanted them to see, when they walked in, they saw the same picture every day. What that does to an athlete is allows them to relax and then go ahead and become committed to you because you're gonna be the same person because I learned not to be a bully, but to be a teacher.
I'm gonna step up on my pul pulpit here, okay? Just for a second. It is Sunday here in the United States, so I can do this. Yeah. Um, but I believe that God tries to keep you on the straight and narrow and he'll keep nudging you down your path. And when you don't follow that path, which I wasn't doing, he'll take that newspaper, roll it up and hit you across the nose. In my case, he had to use a, a chicken house fan, an industrial <laughs> chicken house fan to split my head open to help me understand that it wasn't about yelling. It's about getting their trust, being that same consistent person. You find routines. You treat them all as individuals, not the same. You treat them as individuals. And that's all about gaining trust. When your athletes trust you, you can do anything you want to help them achieve their dreams. But if your athletes aren't following your path, if they're not following your way, if they're distracted and they don't want to do it, they don't trust you. So find a way to get them to trust you. When they trust you, they'll buy into anything you need them to do.